in the previous session we were uh, looking at the matrices and arrays how to create them uh, from the command window of matlab and uh, we try to enter uh, we try to create some of the uh, basic uh, uh, arrays one dimensional arrays and we also created the matrices correct fine now so our next objective is to uh, look at the various options related to the matrix itself okay so let's continue from where we left all right so let me go back to the matlab window and uh, let me create some of the matrices first okay so let's have some matrix say a is equal to okay so let's say this is the matrix okay and uh, since i pressed semicolon i'm not able to visualize the result on the screen but a workspace shows that this is the variable which is created and the value actually if the matrix is very big and we are not able to visualize say you created a 10 into 10 matrix then in that case you will not be able to visualize okay so what you can do is you can click over here you just simply double click on a so you can see a variable space that is popped up right which actually shows the complete content of that variable right as of now this is a matrix of type double so you can see only the three cross three which is here right yes. but if at all this is let's assume it's a 10 into 10 matrix in such case all the 10 rows 10 columns also you can visualize this completely shows whatever is the size of that particular uh, variable you can open the multiple variables as well. So A, B, C, etc. can be opened simultaneously and you can visualize. Okay. So once it is done, you can close it like this. Okay. So moving on to the, say the next uh, objective here. So let's see how to take a, a transpose. Correct. So we have seen that using a single command, I can execute uh, any arithmetic operation on a matrix. I think I didn't write that. Uh, let, let me write that quickly over here. Okay, so this is the point which I didn't write related to the last class. Okay, so this is uh, by simply applying a single a command directly we can write uh, do we can create, we can apply a command directly to a given matrix. All right. So, we can process all values of a matrix by using a single arithmetic operator this is actually applicable for functions as well so or i'll write this is or function so this could be something like i'll just write example so you can write a plus 10 every element of a will be added a value of 10 this is what we have seen in the previous class and you can apply sign of a right so when we enter this each and every entry in that matrix a right will be uh, added uh, will be converted will be taken a sign ratio of those values okay right so moving ahead now so the next option is to take take a transpose whenever we have a matrix the very important matrix operation is called as a transpose okay this is transpose of a 
matrix. So how to perform that? So matrix A I have, I can simply write A dash. This itself will convert matrix A into A transpose. So let's uh, visualize that now. So A is written. So now I, I can enter A dash. Okay, so A dash when I enter, you can see this. The 1, 2, 7, which was the first row, became first column. Second row is second column in the answer. Third row in the third column. Right? So this is applicable for any matrix. Right? We can take a transpose in this. Okay? So that's the first example of the day. Now, uh, let's move further. And uh, I want to talk about the inverse because whenever we have a matrix with us uh, it is obviously uh, necessary that we need to deal with the inverse of a matrix so let's move on so this is inverse of any given matrix right so this is obtained by uh, a function this is the inbuilt function called inv of a if you have a matrix a you can write get the inverse of that matrix by using inv a right so yes. let's see how to use the inv operator in matlab Okay, so let's uh, let me simply write i n v of this matrix A, which we have declared. Okay, so you can see that it says that okay, this particular these are the values uh, of the inverse of U. Right. So I have a question now. If you want to justify that, okay, this is the inverse of the given matrix A, how to find out? Right. How to how to justify that? Yes, this is the inverse of U. Uh, if you remember, uh, we have one uh, specific uh, equation that we have studied in the linear algebra. It says that if you if you know the matrix A and its inverse, right, then if you multiply, right, so right, any matrix A, any matrix A into its inverse, right, uh, I can I can denote in, in mathematics I can denote A into A inverse is I. Correct. It should be identity matrix. This is this is the very basic, yes. the very fundamental equation. Correct. So if there exists a matrix, because you see, uh, each and every matrix has no inverse. It's not necessary that you have to have an inverse for a given matrix. There are some conditions. If uh, the matrix fails to satisfy, then you don't have an inverse. Right. So just because of that, uh, now whenever the the machine says that, right, this is the inverse of your matrix given I don't have to believe right I have I can verify okay so let's do that verification uh, now in my hand. so let's do this so let me call this P is equal to a is the matrix it, see the multiplication is a star in my uh, in MATLAB. Anyway when we deal with the arithmetic operators we'll see this in detail but for the time being let's just use the star to multiply okay this star is used to multiply two different variables uh, or two different matrices etc okay so i and v of a i want to see the result so i am not going to use the symbol you can see that this is uh, minus 1 uh, sorry it's 1 0 0 0 1 0 it, it looks like a identity matrix but there is a minus sign coming up right for zeros all right so if you simply think that there is no meaning for a negative sign being present for minus right but actually you see what happens i'll, I'll i'm going to tell you now right so let's uh, move shift to our uh, notes to discuss see whenever uh, we write the values such as 0 0.4545 0 0.3826 it's actually a truncation for example uh, slightly let me move up the matlab you can see here the the variable inverse of a when we 
uh, calculated the answer for INV of A. You can see in the screen, it says that minus 0 0.4412. But that's actually a truncated value, right? In the sense, there may be uh, six more digits present after that. After the two, you may have six more values. MATLAB shows you only four values because by default MATLAB is made to show only four values. Though there exist more values, it will not show but it will hold on to that value. It will not consider that answer first value as only minus 0 0.4412. It actually considers that as a larger number, right? There will be more digits sent after that decimal points, not just four. This is true for each and every value present in the matrix, right? And the the highest number of uh, uh, the decimal place after the decimal place, how many digits it's going to consider depends on the architecture of the computer. All right. So now you see when you actually multiply them, you may get a very small value like 0 0.0000, then something. But it shows only 0 0.00 because it's allowed to show only four. All right. So. How to visualize that? If that is the case, right? How to uh, visualize that part, right? Again, I want to uh, see more detail about these answers, right? Again, that is allowed uh, in MATLAB. We can we can use it. We can use a specific representation. Uh, we can change the format, right? So uh, I I understand that. If at all I see something like minus zero point zero zero etc right so that actually indicates you were right uh, your answer may not be a complete uh, may not contain only integer values right so for here i note that so the i and v inverse of a right is not a matrix of integers it's not necessary right so this is because uh, anyway I, I told you the reason i'll just make a point over here uh, the matlab stores numbers as floating point values always okay so matlab stores everything in the uh, floating point values right now uh, all the arithmetic operations are pretty much sensitive to the small difference between the actual actual value of that variable and the floating point representation right if you if you consider the floating point representation normally you write it as something into 10 to the power some number Correct. Right? So, so that that's that's the difference, right? So, floating point values means there will be a small difference between the actual value and the representation, right? So, floating point means what I write here. Always you will have a small difference. A small difference between uh, the actual. value so it's slightly deviated from now how do you make sure that you can see that right for that if you want to visualize the complete details right we can display the uh, details of that number using a change of format change of display format so only if you need, you can do this. I'll tell you how to come back as well. So that is by using the command format space. You say you want a long format, right? This is how you do this. Now let's move back to the MATLAB to see what happens when I change the format to long. All right, now I just say format long. So nothing changes because as of now, I just changed the form. I'm saying MATLAB that uh, I'm asking MATLAB to produce every results, reproduce every res results in the long format here onwards. Until and unless I come back, 
I have another command to come back. So everything will be shown in the uh, long format itself. Now you write say p is equal to a into this is i n v of a. All right. So you see. Again, this is much smaller. That's why we are not able to see. So it's one point zero 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 at and much smaller. Now, now I go go back to simply i n v of a. You can see the result in mode. You can you see see this was right just four four one two in the previous case. Right now you see the actual values come up to this again. Considering I think. 15 decimal places, right? Actually, the number could be much larger than that, right? So you can see the complete representation over here, right? So this is the format long. And uh, when we use the format long, we will be able to see more decimal digits, right, of the number. Now, if at all I want to come back, right? So this is format long for Uh, visualizing more digits now if i don't want to visualize uh, more digits then i have to use another so let me write here this is for more digits so if you say format short so this is less digits okay so i'll shift back to the format short now format short so now if you write the same thing inverse of a you can see that right less number of digits are being displayed on the screen okay then we'll move further the next objective for us is to multiply the let's say when, when I multiply right uh, when I multiply the two matrices it's a normal multiplication a, a row is getting multiplied to a column in the matrix in, in, in terms of the multiplication right that's what is the matrix multiplication right the first one which we already have done that that is like if you have a and b defined right so this is multiplication right normally how this happens if you are multiplying a into b so let's say this is matrix a and you have another matrix b right a row of matrix a gets multiplied with the elements of first column of this then first row into second column first row into third column and so on right so that's how you multiply right there there is a condition the number of rows in b should be equal to number of columns in a right so there is a condition otherwise you don't get a product you cannot multiply so the same thing is applicable even in right uh, matter anyway so we have multiplied already a into inverse of a we have done that. so that's a normal multiplication so we don't need any example now there is another type of multiplication right this is called as element wise multiplication right so element wise multiplication now you see there is no such rules like like you have to satisfy the size of the matrix again it's not there as of now for example right i define matrix a as maybe something i uh, some matrix i define i want to multiply the first element of matrix a into first element of matrix b that's all so you can have right it's element by element so let me write two matrices so this is a and this is b you see what happens so the first element is only getting multiplied with the first element of this matrix okay the second element whatever we have gets multiplied only with the second element and to produce an output and so on like that you write 
to the multiplication this is called as element wise multiplication now see the advantage here the sizes do not in the sense the total number of elements in both matrices should match like i have four elements in a i have four elements in b that is sufficient doesn't matter what size it is like in, in the sense doesn't matter what shape it is you can have this into this you see i have some four elements here and four more elements here you can still multiply right but the normal multiplication will not work here because then because of the condition is not being satisfied so the element by element multiplication is one uh, very useful thing and this is also called as a dot product uh, when we uh, use the same vector representation right in vectors you might have studied uh, the what is called as uh, dot product so the the notation for this kind of uh, multiplication is right so i just have to write a it's a dot product so you write dot star if you sim simply write a star it is a normal product so the command is a dot star a okay so let's go back to matlab and check this out all right anyway i have the matrix a defined let me write a once yeah a is this now i write a dot star a so you see this is the answer if i write a into a i know that it's going to be a different answer see the difference right it's element by element multiplication for a dot star a one into one is one two into two is four seven into seven is 49 that's not happening in case of a into a okay so the dot product is uh, very useful in uh, many cases all right so as a fundamentals of matlab we uh, matlab uh, matrices and arrays representation we need to study this as well okay moving on so the next topic that we are going to uh, study here is right raising a uh, matrix to a specific power right so normally any matrix operation will consist of a multiplication division power of right every element right uh, that is required so we can do element wise uh, raising of a power right you can raise the element of a matrix by a specific power again that is element by element so this means right raise elements of a matrix to a power so for example i want to i want to raise the elements of matrix to a power 3 so if i write a power 3 this is the power to the power okay so if i write that it is a into a into a it's not going to perform a every element raised to the power 3 this is not okay so anyway in arithmetic operator we'll see now but what i need you to know now is the element wise raising element wise is dot so you just write hey, it's easy in matlab so whenever you want to go for any operation coming uh, brought down to the element wise level element level you have to put a dot over there like the previous case right a into a is matrix multiplication but if you write a dot star a that is element wise multiplication right so a power 3 generally does the a into a into a but i want every element so put a dot over there a raised to the power 3 so a dot power 3 should perform the element wise cubing of the uh, matrix a so this is a dot so you can raise this to the power uh, 3 so just you know so every element has been raised to the power 3 okay then let's move to the next topic now uh, the next uh, we want to perform say concatenation right so since the matrices are very basic so we are dealing with the matrix and the various operations with the matrix because that's going to help us in doing each and everything as matlab considers uh, everything as 
matrix all right so uh, we'll go for the concatenation so what you are trying to perform here is uh, you are trying to perform the joining okay joining of arrays or matrices right what is the result the result will be larger than uh, any two arrays or matrices you are trying to combine so in matlab you are supposed to use square brackets supposed to use uh, the square as a concatenation operator so the concatenation operator is simply identified by square brackets in matlab right so we have two operations uh, we have two things we can do two things uh, two types of concatenation first one is horizontal right you can perform something like b is equal to see i want to repeat a twice horizontally so you can simply write a space a or even a comma a right so or b is equal to a comma a i know that comma and the space are same when when matrix comes into picture right uh, for the matlab so horizontal concatenation is like this so for horizontal concatenation what is the condition it's not possible to concatenate any size so each array must have same number of rows this is important so note for for horizontal concatenation right the number of rows must be same so let's look at this now so i have uh, i have to concatenate now so let's say uh, as I'll move to the MATLAB window first. Okay, so B matrix B is equal to open a square bracket, write A A. Okay, so you can see that A is repeated twice. It's you can even create a different matrix and concatenate. B is equal to A and C you can put over there. Okay. Uh, if I create another matrix, say C is equal to, like I'll change the number of rows now, okay? So let me say this is uh, 2, 4, uh, 3, 5. If at all I create a matrix like this, and if I try to concatenate this with A now, so B is equal to, so you see it's A which has 3 rows and C which has 2 rows. It throws an error saying that dimensions of array must be uh, that you are trying to concatenate must be same right indicating that the number of rows should remain same all right so that was the explanation for the point which we have written now all right let's move further So just see now, so this is what was the example I just mentioned. I created uh, B is equal to A space A and we got a result like this, okay? But when I created a matrix C as two, four, three, five, having two rows, and I tried to concatenate B equal to A and C, it is actually throwing you an error, saying that right, the dimensions of the arrays must be same. In the sense, they should match, indicating that the number of rows should remain same. Otherwise, you cannot concatenate all right so now moving ahead uh, i have the of concatenation right so that the first one was horizontally concatenation of the matrices the second option is to use uh, what is called as the vertical
so how you can move to the next row after i have let's say i have matrix a which has three rows now i want to concatenate something below that means i should go to the fourth row right anyway i know that new row means a semicolon in matlab so how do you do that this is b is equal to a semicolon a this is one option otherwise you can even write b is equal to open this is a put a semicolon below that you write a and close okay so like uh, how we created uh, the matrices right vertical matrix the column matrix which we created earlier right is very similar to this process so let's see that in matlab so i will create a matrix c now c should be equal to this is a you can see a is repeated twice but one below the other that's a matrix c all right so again we have the similar condition that is coming up which says that you can only perform the vertical concatenation provided the number of columns are same okay so i'll just write a quick note over here right uh, this is for vertical concatenation the number of columns must remain same let's move forward now uh, we know that matrix can even be created with complex numbers right because uh, some of the operations that we perform on uh, matrices might uh, yield complex results right so the next concept is to deal with the complex numbers right so complex numbers in matlab in matlab so we know that a complex number is different from the real number because it has a imaginary part present right so uh, any imaginary part is represented as how oh, in mathematics it is root of minus 1 but if you want to bring the i into picture in matlab this has to be uh, sqrt it's a function to take the square root right of minus 1 so as soon as i enter the square root of minus 1 it generates the imaginary part by default okay so anyway in mathematics we know this right but let's just check that in matlab okay so anyway let me clear all and clear the screen for the time being so let me generate uh, a complex the, the imaginary part of for a complex number as sqrt of uh, minus 1 so as soon as you enter this you can see that the answer is a 0 plus 1i right so like the common uh, convention right uh, the representation of a imaginary part is using i so sometimes we use j as well so even the matlab supports the j for complex representation all right so i and j can be used in matlab for the representation of imaginary part so let's create a, a complex matrix now okay so say i create a matrix a this is equal to so 3 plus 4i see this is the first number okay and uh, i want to create a next number which is uh, say minus i just want to create a minus j i just want to show you that even the negative will work okay then i have minus 3 plus say 
four J. This should work, and I will write uh, simply I. Right. Okay. Let's see. You can see that this creates the complex numbers as required. Right. You can even it, it shows that you can even use I or J. Right. For the representation of the imaginary part in MATLAB. So let's write that as a quick note over here. That is, you can use uh, I or J can be used in MATLAB for imaginary part. Okay, now, uh, so anyway, we can create any matrix. This is going to come later, right? but I just wanted you to introduce to the representation first. How to create a complex number and how to create a complex matrix first. Again, anyway, every rule that we studied so far can be applied to this. You can apply A into A inverse, etc. Many things you can do with the complex matrices as well. Okay, so we can try in your uh, MATLAB uh, when you are free later. Everything that we have, we have studied so far, right, can be applied to the complex numbers as well. Okay, moving ahead. So the next topic is to perform indexing, right? So this is like I want to extract a specific uh, element of a an array or a matrix. So this is. indexing of arrays or the matrices right so we know that uh, an array can hold as many numbers as possible right you can even create a largest possible array right that is supported the, the highest size will be dependent on the architecture of the computer okay so every variable in matlab is an array that's good that's going to hold many numbers right whenever we want to access the specific elements of an array right this the the process of uh, so i can write to access specific elements of an array or matrix we use what is called as an indexing okay so the indexing is uh, actually pretty easy and pretty straightforward in MATLAB compared to the other uh, other languages okay so let's see that so let me go back to the matrix uh, MATLAB first let let's create a matrix okay so let's so let me create a matrix a is equal to this is all right so i'm creating a 4 into 4 matrix right now so the first element the first row and the first column uh, begins with the index like 1 okay it's 1 to 4 it's not like 0 to 3 in c or c plus plus okay so like the rows will the the rows are given the numbers like one, two, three, four. There are four rows. So first row is number one, second row is number two, third is three, and four. Similarly, columns are also graded in the same way. First column is number one, then two, then three, and four. Now let me assume that I my requirement is to read a specific element from the from the from this matrix. So if at all I want to do that, so let's say assume I want to read the fourth row second element correct for example fourth row second column is 14 
So you can simply specify a of this is normal bracket, but specify the row number and specify the column number. That is 14. Okay, this is one method, right? So you can simply uh, refer to a particular element in an array in the most common way of specification that is by using the row and column subscripts, right? So that's the first technique. But there is another very useful way in MATLAB which uses a single subscript, correct? So single subscript or this is also called as a linear indexing where you read every column as a straight line. In the sense, you keep counting the numbers like this one is linear index number one, index number two is this, index number three is this, index number four is this. This is a, it's a linear way of indexing. So you consider every column as your straight line. So first straight line is over, then you go to the next one, but the index will keep on incrementing. So four over, this is five, index number six, seven, and eight. So you see if I simply enter a of eight, I still read 14. Right. So, you know, the size of the matrix means every column uh, has uh, every column has the number of elements equal to the number of rows. So four rows in this case. So, right. Second row, last element is third will be 12. Then the last one is 16 and so on. Right. We can do this. So this is there are two types of indexing. First technique, as we already know, that is the, the, the most common way of indexing right but the second one is the one which is of more advantages for us that is actually called as the linear indexing so i'll just write the two techniques over here for your reference all right so the common way this is the most common uh, indexing this is the most common way so you specify the row i'll write by by specifying the row and the column of an element right for example this is a of 4 comma 2 at the same time uh, if i want to do the quicker technique this is called as linear the linear indexing in MATLAB right so you can simply specify this is a of 8 okay All right let's move further this is the indexing of a given matrix in this now, uh, what happens if you are going to specify an array which is outside the matrix? Okay, so let's say let's look at the uh, let's look at that aspect now, just to understand what's going to happen. I'll try to access a number which is outside this. Say I have you. You see that I don't have a. Uh, fourth row fifth column let's assume right i don't see a fourth row fifth column element right so let me let me read that so if i say a of fourth row fifth column see it's an error obviously because right the position number two indicates that the, the column number you enter so four comma five four is position one five is position two the 5 is actually larger than the bounds. Bound is 4, right? So this is not possible. But now I'll tell you one trick, right? What if I just want to add one element to the fifth row only, right? If you go for other programming languages, you have to add zeros to the fifth column and only that value which you want to enter. So after 16, let's say horizontally, I want to add a 17 over there. For that, we need to do a lot of uh, programming for other languages, but now you see, what I want to do here, I can do like simply equal to say 17. So you see it actually adds a whole column to the right. That particular value which you want to add, 
will get added up all the other value uh, other rows above that gets addition of uh, a particular column with values equal to zero so this is an advantage okay so whenever i try to assign something i uh, some specific number only to a row or column the size of the array increases so that you can accommodate the newcomers that's the ultimate idea all right okay now let's see how to read uh, a whole row or whole column or a part of the row or part of the column this is what we want to read now all right fine so this is now we want uh, to read multiple elements of an array so multiple elements indicate that i have to read from something to something okay so so we have to say from here to here i want to read first element to the third element something like that right so that we use a operator that is a colon operator right use in the following fashion i have to specify from where to start this is the starting index colon the end index right so in the sense let me assume right i have a matrix a right in the matrix a let me assume i have a matrix a like this let's assume this is uh, a four into four matrix let's assume in which i want to read the this is the second column and i want to read the first three elements of the second column correct so what is the column number column number is two and what are the row numbers one row number two and row number three correct i want to read three numbers which are stored over here so if you want to access that then you are supposed to enter a of right see definitely this is row this is column first i have to specify the row numbers then i have to specify the column number but you see how many rows you want to read you want to read three rows so row number one starting till row number three one colon three comma it's a fixed column right column number two so you simply have to enter in this fashion to specify like this okay so let's see how this works in MATLAB. So A is here, I will enter the same way. So this is A of, I want to read first till third row of second column, right? I'm expecting what answers now? Two, four and two, six and 10, because A you can see here, right? The second row, second column has two, six and 10 right these are the answers that i want to see now so you can see right you are able to extract in the same way so another example i want to read the third row third row and you can see i want to read uh, right uh, like the 10 11 and 12 so what should i enter this is a of row number is fixed now row is 3 but the column values are 2 till 4 Two, three, four. So it it should display ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, like that. So that's what we are going to do when I whenever I want to read specific. Now now we, you, even you can read. I'll show you another uh, technique. Uh, we can read say these values. Like I just want to read six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve. It's possible right so you can see you just have a now rows will change columns will also change rows are row number two starts from two till three two and three right comma columns are like two to four correct 
just enter. So you see, you are extracting 6, 7, 8, 10, 11 value. Rows number, row numbers are specified first, come off column numbers. Like that, you can read uh, a part of the matrix as well, right? We can do that. All right, now, uh, let's say we want, I want to read the complete row and complete column, row or a complete column. So, this is our next idea. So, here, uh, to read a complete row. So if you want to read, you, I don't want to visualize a specific region like start to end. I don't want to see that. I want to read the complete row, right? So the complete row indicates that row number is fixed. All the columns you should read. Correct? I want to read a specific row. Right? Specific row indicates, okay, that row, but all the columns of that row. So, how do you specify? Now, for example, this is A of row number 3. So, after, after the row number, I need to put a comma. Now, I have to tell that I want to read all the columns. So, all the columns indicate only colon, no start and end values. So, this, this represents all columns. So, since the position is columns, it reads complete all the columns, right? So, at the same time, if you want to read a complete column so what is the idea it is the it, the idea is that i want to read all the rows of a particular column all the row all should come now first followed by the column number right column number can be anything any any column which you want there, there is a comma in the middle so i'll write two so this indicates the all is representing the rows now so you are reading all rows yes sir okay now, let's uh, go to MATLAB to see this. I have the matrix GA. So, first I'm writing, I'm trying to read all the elements of third row. So, this is row number 3, all columns. Right? So, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 0 is what I'm expecting. Okay? Similarly, if I want to read a specific column say the column number two read all rows of second column so you see you are reading the second column of that matrix a yes, okay right now let's move further now this column operator is uh, it can be used for different purpose. Now we saw the column uh, operator as of now, correct? Just inside a matrix. But this column operator is, uh, it can be used for many other applications. So we'll quickly go through them as well because we will be using them uh, sometimes. So the column op operator allows us to create an equally spaced vector values, right? So I'll directly write the column as an operator. So this is used uh, to create an equally spaced vector of values so what it means is that i will specify in the following way so this implies you have to i know that i will usually write the 
the start part initially this was the start colon end but i don't write end as it is i'll write a step when okay to end so something like you can write zero i want to incre increment by 10 and i want to go till 100 correct so let's see this right it actually creates starting creates an array starting from zero till 100 with the spacing of 10 in the middle right so that that's what is the usage this is very helpful so let's see that okay so let me create a okay let me clear the whole and uh, say i want to create this a is equal to say starting from zero uh, i want to have the value of step as 10 and i want to go till 100 you can see a is 0 to 100 created in a single step right in the space so this is the first thing so now previously when we use the colon operator we didn't see the we didn't observe that there is a step in the middle right so we omitted that that is possible now you see what happens if i omit that step so create b is equal to simply i write 0 colon 100 right so you see it creates all the 100 numbers because when you don't specify the step the default value of step equal to 1 will be counted matlab takes the default step as size step size equal to 1 all right so this that that's a case now anyway i I'll, I'll go back and I'll write something, then we'll come back. Okay, so, so this means what? It creates, it creates a uh, array of the specified uh, starting point, specified the step till the end. All right, so the next point is if the step is omitted this implies default value of step equal to 1 is considered 